Hey, this is Earl Reagan from Camping Indiana, and welcome to our sixth video. This is about picking a good campsite, something everybody needs to know. Whether you're primitive, RV, motorhome, whatever, a, a good campsite is a make or break thing because if you have a good campsite, you're going to relax, you're going to enjoy yourself, you're going to have a good weekend. If you have a bad campsite that's got problems, you're going to be miserable all weekend. So, Picking a good campsite is fundamentally important to you having a good camping experience. And there's a bunch of things that figure into that. And we're going to go into that in regards to primitive. And then after we're done here at Green Sullivan State Forest, we're going to go up to Shackamack State Park and do a section on RVs. And we have a special guest that's going to be on the RV section. So we're looking forward to presenting this material and uh, helping anybody pick up ticks, uh, tips, or learn new things. So, the important things about picking a good campsite, I would say the first one would be drainage. Um, there have been campsites, and in fact, we're gonna show you one here in a few minutes, that look like a really good campsite, except they're in a really low spot. And if you camped there and it rained, it'd be like being in a river. Uh, drainage, especially if you're in a tent, is extremely important uh, and I've seen people post uh, pictures of RVs that are in the mud because they didn't realize that it had poor drainage and there's some things ways you can study it and figure out what kind of drainage you're gonna have there's a bug on me and so drainage is probably the number one thing across the board between primitive and RV is, is that you get a spot that if it does rain, the water's gonna drain real quickly and you're not gonna end up in a swamp. Um, probably the next most important thing would be shade. Shade is really nice to have during a hot summer day. It's really nice to have uh, just uh, being in the open sun the whole time isn't really enjoyable and so Having good shade trees is nice, and it if it's a, if you're in an RV that's you know metal, I mean you can heat up quite a bit in the direct sunlight. If you've got good shade, then you're going to be a lot more comfortable at it. So having good shade is really important as well. And there's ways you can learn these things. I think probably the next most important thing is something I've posted about, and we're going to show you some pictures here in a few minutes is something called widow makers. You need to look around and you look at your campsite, you look at drainage, you look at shade, and then you look up to see if there's any dead trees or dead branches. They're called widow makers because they can come down in a storm and crush you, and that has happened. There have been people killed that were camping because a widow maker broke off and came down and crushed them. Um, my partner, Fran, she had an uncle die from a widow maker, so it does happen, and that's something you've got to really be aware of, so look around, you look for drainage, you look for shade, and you look up to make sure there's no dead branches. I'm looking at one right now, and that branch has already, it looks like it's already broken off once, and so we're going to show you some widow makers here at Green Sullivan, and that is hugely important that you're not going to be in the path of something that's going to fall. And of course, as we all know, weather in Indiana is really predictable, <laughs> or not. Um, <coughs> you don't know when a storm is going to come blowing in or high winds, and so staying away from widow makers uh, is a matter of life or death. Um, and I think the next thing that I want to mention is wildlife habitat. And I'm going to go into this a whole lot more in our safety around wildlife video in a couple weeks. But Indiana has different habitats. You've got habitats where there may be a lot of coyotes. You've got habitats where there might be a lot of bobcats. You've got habitats that do have rattlesnakes. And if you're going to camp in one of those areas, you need to do some learning. You need to know... Uh, actual facts versus mass hysteria you need to know the safety rules let's say around snakes which has been a big topic in camping indiana and so before you go camping someplace 
research the wildlife habitat and make sure that it's something you're comfortable with or it's something that you can learn and become comfortable with and know the rules. Well, I can tell you, as a four-year-old child, I went camping down in Tennessee with my parents and we were around eastern diamondback rattlesnakes, copperheads, bobcats, and black bear. And as a four-year-old child, I knew all the safety rules because my parents were expert outdoorsmen and they made sure I knew these things. Point being that if you're going to learn about the wildlife habitat and educate yourself, and then by all means, you can, you can go and be comfortable. If you are so terrified of something that you are going to be miserable all weekend because you're all tense and worried, don't go. I mean, I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but I've seen people just absolutely hysterical over rattlesnakes in Brown County, and there's really not that many of them. Yeah, they're there, but it's not like they chase people around. Um, and if you're that terrified of them and you don't want to take the time to learn accurate information, don't camp there because you'll be miserable the whole time. You'll be all paranoid, you'll be all tense, you'll have anxiety. So wherever you're going, look into the wildlife habitat. For instance, when I was a child and we went to Tennessee, my dad made sure he knew everything about bears. Of course, he'd camped around bears before and he was comfortable with the habitat we were going to. So it was okay for us. If dad didn't know any of that stuff and we'd have gone down there, um, we'd have been miserable all weekend because we'd have been all tense and worried and I'd have probably gotten eaten by a bear. So educate yourself. I know there are places in Indiana that have a large amount of coyote and coyote really aren't dangerous unless they're hungry. Um, but like I said, we're going to go into that uh, much more extensively on our safety around wildlife video coming soon. So. Make sure you're comfortable with the habitat. Oh, about 10 years ago, somebody invited me to go tent camping in Florida. And I'm like, oh no, I don't want to camp around alligators. Really? But that's because I didn't know anything about camping around alligators. People down there do it. So if I had gone down there, I would have taken the time to educate myself first so I didn't become a snack. Um, so make sure you're comfortable with the wildlife habitat, whatever it happens to be. I know there are some neat there are critters in Indiana. I know there's an area that's got a large number of foxes, which are really neat to watch. I know there are some areas um, that have a large number of river otters, and river otters are absolutely adorable. Um, if you've never seen one in the wild, they're a real treat to watch them play. So check on the wildlife habitat so that you are comfortable in where you're going to. Um, enough about that for now to get back to the subject at hand of picking a good campsite. So we're going to, we're going to talk about the widow makers, the drainage. Um, when it comes to tent camping, there are several factors that make a good campsite or a bad campsite. I think probably the drainage is the most important one, but past that, the ground that you're camping on is the next most important. And if you're camping like on a nice bed of pine needles or in a grassy area that's smooth, that's a really good campsite. If you find an area that's full of big old rocks and uh, tree root, exposed tree roots, you're not going to be your tent's not going to be a comfortable place. Even if you sleep on an air mattress, you're going to end up stepping on tree roots, which is going to hurt your foot. So make sure you look where you're pitching your tent. And along with that, you should have a good ground cloth. And a ground cloth would be cut about two inches smaller than your tent all the way around. Um, because if it's too big and it rains, you get water under your tent. So the ground cloth should be around two inches, maybe three inches smaller than the tent. And there's two good types of ground cloths. You can use the old school canvas ground cloth, which is by far and away the best, which I don't even have one of those now. We had several of them when I was a kid. Um, and you can use a, a poly tarp. Um, if you get a poly tarp, just buy one that's about the right size, get a pair of scissors, and cut it down to where it's the right size. They're not going to be any good as a tarp anymore, but it's a good thing to put underneath your tent. So 
I recommend no matter what you're camped on, whether it's grass, pine needles, or something worse, that you have a ground cloth. It'll protect the floor of your tent, and it will protect your feet. So, <coughs> make sure you have a decent ground cloth. Another thing that a lot of primitive campers miss is facing your door away from the prevailing weather. Here in this part of the world, weather here in the Midwest, weather generally comes from the Southwest. Sometimes from the Northwest, but generally the Southwest. You want to face your tent so that your door is facing away from the weather. It's like east or northeast. And the reason for that is if it is raining, you can open your door and not get your inside of your tent blasted. Um, so, you know, check your directions and make sure your door is facing away from the prevailing weather. And that'll make a big difference if you do in an event have bed with. Let's say you have no rain, but you just have high winds. If your door is facing into the winds, you open the door, you're going to have all kinds of leaves and debris and what have you blow your way into your tent. It's going to blow your stuff out. So having your door facing away from the prevailing weather is pretty important stuff. Um, so those are all things that are that are unique to tent camping that you wouldn't have to worry about you know with an RV you you just pull it in and you park but like I said we're gonna have a really great section on RVs from Chacomac State Park in a little while um, for a tent you know check your drainage check the direction of your door check the underlayment and make sure that you're not camped on a bunch of exposed tree roots because that is going to be really uncomfortable and for God's sake keep an eye out for widow makers so, since we've had this long introduction, we are getting ready. We're going to go look at a couple of campsites, and we're going to show you Widowmakers, and we're going to show you a place with some poor drainage, and it will be a real good illustration of the things that I'm talking about here. So, oh. okay, people, this one here is an example of a really bad campsite. It's not flat. It's got rocks sticking up. It's got exposed roots by that tree over there on the left. It's got big boulders right here in the front. There is no place to pitch a tent in here. I mean, if you did, you would be uncomfortable and miserable all weekend. So, always look for one that's got good, it's got nice shade. It's right next to the water. If it were smooth, it'd be a beautiful campsite. But uh, this is not a decent place to pitch a tent. So, I wouldn't even consider one like this. So stay away from these and you'll be a lot more comfortable. Okay, people, both primitive and RV, this is a Widowmaker. That is a dead tree, dead branches, and a good storm or lightning, it can come down and ruin your life or it can kill you. Don't ever camp near one of those because if a storm or a high wind does come up, it is going to be a bad deal. Um, I've seen Widowmakers come down in storms. Um, I've seen RVs that have been smashed. So don't ever camp near a dead tree. There's a reason they're called Widowmakers. So stay away from those and you'll be a lot safer. Okay, this looks like a really great campsite. It's got good shade. It's got nice grass. It's smooth. It's got plenty of room it's got a nice fire ring but if you look behind me there's a big old hill there's several big old hills back there and that whole hillside drains right to here when it rains so you might come here and set up your tent and be having a good old time and then it decided to rain a little bit and you're going to be camping in a swamp um, it, I, you just have to be careful about that and you when you go to pick out a campsite like I talked about, you talk about widow makers, you talk about the underlayment, you talk about the door, your, the direction your door's facing, but this is the last part of it, is you've got to make sure you're not camped in something that's going to have a river running through it. Um, and of course, we've all seen videos on Camping Indiana of people that don't pay attention to that, that end up in a muddy mess, and then they're miserable, and they're just hating life, and they're complaining about it. So make sure you take a look out for the drainage 
and camp on a higher spot or a place that you know is not going to become uh, not going to become a, uh, a swamp. Okay. All righty, we're here at Shackamack State Park for the uh, section on RVs. And uh, we are being hosted by Carolyn and Mike Tatera, who are active members of Camping Indiana. And uh, she'll be on with us in a minute. But as far as choosing good campsites for RVs, it's probably a little bit more complicated than the type of primitive camping I do because you have more considerations to take into account. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit and then Carolyn's gonna tell us what she thinks is most important. And I think for a lot of people, the most important thing is, is its level. Is it, you know, they're not gonna be jacked down a hill and have to do a bunch of leveling to get it. And having a level campsite makes everything a whole lot easier and a uh, lot less issues to deal with. And I think from everything I gather from people, that's probably the most important. And right behind that uh, is shade. People like to have shade on their on their RV. You don't want to be out in the sun baking all the time. So shade is a nice thing to have. And so we uh, encourage people. I like looking at Google Maps or Google Earth to see what kind of campsite we're going to. So that's important. And along with, you know, there's several things. Is, is that when you're making your reservations, pay attention to the electrical lamps. I've heard of people with a 50 amp travel trailer pulling into a site that only has 20 amp service and obviously that's not going to be any good so when you get online and you're making your reservations pay attention to these pay attention they'll tell you whether it's level or if it's got a slope um, and the electrical service and whether or not it's if you need full hookup whether or not it's got full hookups or not is obviously important to people with rvs so just try and keep all these things in mind especially you new people that have just bought your first rv and you're starting to go out to the campgrounds, try and keep an eye on these things so you don't get surprised. That's why we're doing this. And I think another thing that's important is if you get a beautiful site, this is a gorgeous campsite. It is a back end site. It is not a pull through site. Most pull through sites don't have trees and therefore you don't have a whole lot of shade and it's just out in the open. And I know a lot of people have been discussing not being able to back their travel trailer in and like i told everybody the other day go get you a couple of orange cones go to a big huge empty parking lot and practice especially if you just bought your first rv and you will learn to back fairly quickly and it's a lot that's a lot better than going to a campground and then hitting a tree and speaking of trees i think obstacles is something else everybody needs to pay attention to i've heard stories of someone getting to a campground and there's a tree in the way and they can't open their awning or there's a tree in an unfortunate place that is causing them not to be able to camp the way they'd like to so be on the lookout for obstacles now with with having to reserve rv campsites it's maybe a little bit more difficult than what i go to primitive campgrounds and i just go find a spot and i'm good to go with as busy as the campgrounds are now having to make reservations makes that a little bit more important that you are paying attention to the to the real basic things that you need to pay attention to so you have a nice weekend i mean a lot of times if you go in and it's not the right campsite you're gonna have a miserable weekend and you know we're all here to enjoy the outdoors to relax um and so that's i think a big part of it and i think one of the things i've heard people mention is if you have a dog please pick up after your dog. There's been way too many people not doing that and it leaves the sites kind of nasty. So anyway, I'm gonna introduce Carolyn to Tara. She is an active member of Camping Indiana and somebody we really like having. This is Carolyn. Hi. And Carolyn, what for you is the most important thing when you're reserving a campground? Um, the first thing that I look at, cause I make the reservations, I always go in and I, they got pictures most of the time that you can look at your site, okay? Okay. You also want to make sure that it's long enough. You know, if you have a 30-foot camper going into a 25-foot spot, you're not going to get in there. Very good So point. make sure that you get a place. 
Um, with that picture, they show, you know, the site so you can see how many trees. It also tells you a lot of times whether you'll have morning sunshine or late sun afternoon sunshine. Oh, that's good. Yes, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so they'll tell you that. And uh, then from there, you can make your reservation, you know. And so just watch, you know, what campsites you get. Uh, here at Shackamack, we've looked through here. They're all pretty level. We have been to places that we have had you know, to jack the back end up or the front end, right. it's sort of scary. So, you know, all you campers need to pay attention to this. So when you get there, you won't be aggravated or dissatisfied, you know, okay. just like, you know, making sure that if you want a place that has a um, water and a set sewer, you know, make sure that that it shows it right there on the, you know, where you're going to camp the information, yes. right. Okay. Okay. And so when you started having a large travel trailer, did you, did you find things out the hard way like oh we shouldn't do this or we shouldn't do that um somewhat but um the people well we've always pretty well camped with a group okay and so they're they know a little bit more about things than we do okay but they've always been there to help yes and uh, ever since we've been in your group this camping indiana we've learned a lot from that but awesome. yeah it's it's taken you know it's taken some stuff the only thing that helps me really uh to an extent is my husband's a semi driver oh so, yeah well i'm sure he knows so when it comes sure to he back, can back in, sim. Yeah, yeah yeah you know we don't have any problems there but you know like you said you know if your first time go out into a parking lot or something and learn how to do that well that's know? what i've been encouraging people to the other thing i've seen is a few people like let's say they want to go well let's say they want to come here at shackamack and they live an hour and a half away they might make a day trip down here and just drive through to right. see what they like what they don't like write down numbers of campsites and stuff yeah. and i think that's real helpful right. as well it is okay do you have any advice for the new the newbies um just make sure when you get your camper make sure when we got this one they didn't do very good walkthrough make sure you get a walkthrough ask any questions make sure you get your keys we had to make a second trip back when we got ours oh they didn't so make sure you get the keys make sure you get all your contracts um, your warranties everything make sure that you have that and know how to hook up your campers before you leave where you bought your that's camper good at. that's good advice okay. thank you um and have you had problems with a lot of campsites having trash around yes and... yes um uh, well not a lot today um uh, of course there's a burn burn uh, van burn right van right now but uh, this isn't too bad, but there is a plastic bottle in there. Yeah. And we're going to clean it up before we leave, you know, just so the next so, person will be better than what we come to. Right. I know? think a lot of new campers don't understand, uh, and I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying they're new, right. they haven't had experience yet, that you can't just use that as a trash can. You have right. to bag your trash up. Yes. They have dumpsters all over, right? So you can put your trash in a dumpster, but leaving it in the fire rings, yeah. impolite. Although that's better than just leaving it scattered all over the woods. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think of Shackamack State Park? Um, it, this first time we've been here, we'll probably be back. Good. Uh, I kept the map that they gave us when we come in, so I know what places have uh, electric and um, water. Okay. So the next time I'll be a little bit more prepared, you know. But. Um, it's a very nice place. It's clean. Good fishing uh, and kayaking. Too. Yeah, yeah, and and the paddle boats and row boats. So right. you know, and it's all clean. And they're okay. adding on at this point too. Awesome. Now, is there anything you'd like to add about camping with an RV? Um, just just to make sure that you have everything that you need. Uh, you know, plenty of drinks. Uh, your food. Uh, there's always places to ask or places to go to find out more about it. Um, we do have a pet. So when you do take your pets with you, always try to keep them on a leash, especially when you're walking out. And what we have found is people don't pick up after their animals. People, these little plastic bags are... Oh, and the campground has those for you to... Yes, for, the campground, okay. this one does, okay. right in front of the restrooms over here. So Very there's good. no reason in the world why you can't pick it up. You Very know, nice. So. Okay, well, I appreciate you letting us come up here and, well, thank you. and film this, and I appreciate you being on. You're the first actual guest we've had in the video, <laughs> so we're glad to have you here. And she's, a, like I said, she's a very, very good, very active member of Camping Indiana, and she will tell you that she has learned a lot from Camping yes. Indiana, picking up tips. So, I mean, this is the place to be for it. So, thank you for being with us here at Shackamack State Park, and... Um, we have a few closing thoughts that we're going to film down at Green Sullivan. So we will see everybody later. 
Okay, this has been a really great day up at Shackamack and at Green Sullivan. And so, uh, big thank you to Carolyn and Mike. So, last couple of things I wanted to mention here is housekeeping. Please, please take care of your trash. Take trash bags with you. There are dumpsters all over every DNR property. And take your trash and put it in the dumpster. Do not leave trash in your fire ray. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of that lately. I know when Fran and I uh, went and cleaned over the campground up at Reservoir 26 last week, we found trash in probably half the fire rays. Beer bottles, pop bottles, bread wrappers, everything you can think of. Please be a good member and police up your campsite. Get rid of your trash. Throw it in the dumpsters or just take it with you either way, but do not leave trash in your campsite. And right behind that is your fire pit. Take a gallon jug of water with you that you're not going to drink out of or use for anything else. That is for uh, putting out your fire. You can never, never leave a campfire burning, especially when you leave. You do not leave a campfire burning in the morning when you're going to go hiking. You do not leave a campfire burning. Uh, when you go to bed, you have to put out the campfire. Back in the 70s, there were public service announcements featuring, featuring Smokey the Bear that the, they talked about drowned, stir, and drowned again, which is you you pour water around, you stir the camp, the hot logs around with the stick, and then you pour more water in. And so always, always extinguish your fire before you go do anything. Yeah, that's kind of a problem in the daytime because you go back and your fire pit's wet, but if it's a nice day, it'll dry out. Um, there's an advanced method, which is to cover your fire up with ashes and dirt, but we're gonna go into that later on in advanced fire building techniques. So make sure you put out your fire. And as far as Camping Indiana, the main reason I started this group was to share information. So if you want to know about a campground, um, ask people. There, you'll probably get 30 answers. We've got enough members that now that are active that if you ask, you know, hey, uh, you know, what do you know about this campground or that campground? People get in and answer you, and that is one of the great resources for Camping Indiana is for people to get information on different parts of the state. I like being adventurous. I like going to places I've never been. Uh, for instance, I've never been to Tippy Canoe River State Park, and if I wanted to go up to Tippy River. I would ask people, well, what's good to, you know, what can, kind of campsites do they have? Can I fish? So I would get on there and I'd get all the information about Tippy Canoe River that I could. So that is a great resource of Camping Indiana. And frankly, that's one of the things that I'm really proud of is that it has become such a good resource for people. So use Camping Indiana to get your information about different campgrounds, post reviews. Uh, <clears throat> that's what Camping Indiana is for. So thank you for being with us today and I hope you have a good time picking out new campsites.